damsels, it's Erwan here. If you've clicked on this video and you think that I'm gonna be talking about Disney stuff, then stop right here. This has nothing to do with Disney. So if you're here to watch something Disney related, I would skip this video and I would just go watch something else that I put out because you're not gonna like this because this has nothing to do with Disney. But I needed to make this video for myself because I wanted to have this memory of this feeling, like this moment in time. And uh, you're gonna understand in a second why. If you want something Disney related, go click out right now and go watch something else because this has nothing to do with Disney. So you have your warning. So I just wanna apologize right now to anyone who is watching this because I know that this video is not gonna make any sense whatsoever. Obviously from the title, you know that this is gonna be talking about the play Burn This that uh, aired on Broadway for I think four months. So it's no longer on Broadway right now. The last day was on July 14th. It was a Sunday. And unfortunately, if you are trying to see this play, it is no longer there. So the reason why I was so adamant in going to see this play is because Adam Driver, Adam Driver. So if you don't know who Adam Driver is and you've kind of been living under a rock and haven't really been listening to what's been going on the past two years or three years or so, Adam Driver is the infamous Kylo Ren in the new Star Wars trilogy. So after I watched The Force Awakens, I fell in love with his character. I fell in love with Kylo Ren. I fell in love with the way that he portrayed Kylo Ren. I just think he's such an amazing actor. Yes, there is a girl crush there. It's not all just because he's an amazing actor. Yes, I am attracted to him. Yes, I think he is handsome. So yeah, so he is my celebrity crush. Let's just let's just put it that way. And when I heard that he was going to be in this play alongside of Carrie Russell, I was like, oh my god, I have to go and watch this play. How can I not? I live in New York. I literally live a bridge away from where this play is taking place, okay? Is it a bridge away? No, it's like two. It's more like two bridges. Obviously, when I brought this up to my husband, my husband does know about my infatuation with Adam Driver and he's okay with it. Like he's, he does think it's weird, but he has accepted me, like all of me. So when I brought this idea up to him, um, if we could go see it, we started looking up tickets and me, I'm sorry. Like if I'm gonna go see a play and I wanna see my, my actor, if I wanna see my favorite actor in this play, I don't wanna be like, all the way in row Z where I can't even hear or see anything. I told him I want a good seat. So we looked up orchestra tickets. Orchestra tickets were $350 each. I think $350 is worth it to watch Adam Driver, but my husband does not. He said that was just a waste of money. And then he ended up surprising me with tickets and the tickets cost us like $110 each. Not too bad, especially where we were seated. We were seated in the dress circle. So there's the stage, right? Then there's the orchestra, which is on the first floor, then it's the dress circle, then it's the balcony. So balcony people, I feel so bad for them. They were totally screwed. Like you could barely see anything from up there. But again, like it's the cheapest. So whatever you can afford, that's where you sat. So we were able to get tickets in the dress circle. We were in the second row. So it was pretty close. I'll insert a picture of like where we were seated just so that you guys can see like my view of it. I was just very, very excited. I was having heart palpitations. I was, my heart was like pounding. Did I know what this play was about? No, I, I literally did no research whatsoever. All I knew was that Adam Driver was in it and I needed to go see it. Let me actually read you the premise of the play because when I went into it, I literally had no idea what it was about. I was going in blindsided. I knew that it was kind of like a romance, but other than that, I didn't really know what I was getting into. And of course, like the romance factor definitely did um, persuade me to go see it even more because I don't know if you guys know, but I'm a romantic at heart. Anything to do with romance, like in movies or books, I'm all for. So I'm like a romantic. So just some information about me. It says, this is on the website by the way. When a mysterious death brings together two unlikely strangers, their explosive connection sparks a chemistry too fiery to ignore. The New York Times raves, decades from now, people will be speaking with gratified wonder of Adam Driver's performance that we will. Carrie Russell is luminous, bringing emotional authenticity and quiet yearning to her role. Burn This ignites and smolders in director Michael Mayer's revival. Burn This feels rare and refreshing in American theater. Don't miss this smoldering story of love and raw attraction by one of the most vital playwrights of the modern era. So this play was done before, so this is kind of like a rendition of it. And I'm so glad that they did because I thought it was so, so good. Like I loved it. We were laughing 
laughing. It was hilarious. It was like gut-wrenching. There were moments where you just like, okay, first of all, I had never been to just a play. Like I've been to musicals, I've seen Frozen, I've seen Aladdin, I've seen Mamma Mia like on Broadway. And like those things are very loud. There's music, there's dancing, there's singing. This was not like that at all. And I knew that there was no music in this or like no singing, but I did not think it was gonna be this raw. And what I mean by that is there were moments in the play where it was like silence. You could hear a pin drop. Like it was silent silence. Like you could hear the person breathing next to you. That's how silent it was. And then there were scenes that happened between um, certain characters in the play and like there was, you know, like let's say it was a very like emotional scene where someone was crying. It was just like my mind was just like, whoa, like I cannot believe that this is actually happening in front of me like live. There's four characters in the whole entire play. It's in the same setting. It's in a Manhattan law. Like when the play first starts, we see Carrie Russell's character who's named Anna and she's um, crying and grieving and like smoking a cigarette. Her boyfriend comes in and, and you hear them talk about this tragic death that happened to her roommate and his lover basically like just the way that that you know that she had to cope with this sadness of losing a friend and she does have another roommate as well that she does live with he was played by brandon yarnowitz and he was hilarious absolutely hilarious he was her gay roommate and like literally like everything that came out of his mouth was hysterical like i really did love the element of humor there's a lot of humor in this basically that's how the scene starts is just you're learning about this tragic event that happened and then um, Adam Driver's character, who is pale, he comes in one night and he's like pounding on the door on Carrie Russell's door, like Anna's character. Anna's door, Carrie Russell's character. We find out that he's the brother of the her roommate that recently passed away. And basically he's coming to pick up his brother's things. I can't even like describe to you the presence that Adam had on that stage. It was like, whoa every eye was on him when he came in the way that he carried his character was just again it was like shocking but you couldn't take your eyes off him there was a scene where he's like crying and he's legit crying and screaming and just making this big scene and i was like holy like this is crazy and he did it like i mean he's an actor i know he's an actor but the fact that he can just like turn it on like that was I was speechless. Honestly, I was speechless. Like I said, there were certain scenes that were very intimate and very emotional. Like I kind of felt bad for watching. Like, does that make sense? Cause like, I felt like it was such an intimate moment. Like that's how real this play looked. Like that's how real these characters felt to me. There was a scene between Anna and Pale. So Adam and Carrie, it's New Year's Eve. Anna and her her boyfriend are like toasting to New Year's Eve or whatever. Her roommate comes in and then they're all toasting all three of them together. And then all of a sudden you hear banging on the door and it's Adam Driver, it's pale. Obviously there is um, a theme of, I guess, infidelity in this play, obviously because Anna's character is with someone already, but she does, <laughs> I guess, sleep with you know, Adam's character. And obviously this is ongoing and her boyfriend has no idea. So Pale comes in one night, he's drunk off his ass. This is actually like a reoccur a reoccurring thing that happens. Like he comes in drunk and I guess like Anna, Carrie Russell, has to pick up the pieces. Adam comes in, her boyfriend has no idea who this man is and he's like, what is going on? She kind of has to like make up a lie. Basically things are said, we go back and forth, she's trying to get rid of him, he's not leaving. I guess a little scuffle happens and oh my god, if I could just find the scene. I actually did buy the play. Burton, which is Anna's boyfriend, has no idea what's going on, who this guy is, and then he finds out he's Robbie's brother, her her roommate that passed away. They're trying to get Pale to leave. Burton, her boyfriend, is telling him like he needs to go and Anna knows like he's not gonna go because this has been a reoccurring thing. So she's telling her boyfriend like just leave it alone, I'll take care of it, you go. Her boyfriend Burton, so there's a lot of cussing in this, I'm just gonna say, I'm not gonna say the word, but he goes, no way am I leaving you alone with this. Go on buddy, out. You first, just go really, I'm not gonna have it, that's not the way I live. We're gonna have a party that son of a bee comes over. No way. Leave, go on, I'll see you tomorrow. I can't have it. Anna, what kind of a man is gonna leave you alone with him, huh? What's he gonna do? Anna says, nothing. You don't know him. I know him. He's fine. I can't kick him out, so I'm asking you to leave. I'll kick him out, no problem. Go damn it, you're the one I don't know right now. Pale, you effing him too? 
literally the whole audience gasped when that happened because like this is the moment that Burton finds out that he's being cheated on. What'd you say? Would you please not do this crap? Hale says, good night. Burton, really, good night. What's he talking about? It's utterly beside the point. Good night, tomorrow. I'm gonna have to rethink everything in here. I mean, our whole relationship here, this isn't it. This is nothing I want any part of. And then he leaves. That scene was intense, like really intense. Again, I didn't do it justice, obviously, because I'm not an actor and there's like three different people talking. Just the way that they interacted with each other and the dynamic that happened, it was crazy. Like, they did such a good job. And I, I really regret not being able to see it more than once. Like, I was only able to see it once, but again, I'm, I'm really thankful that I was at least able to see it once. We saw a matinee showing at 2 p.m. So after the show, sometimes the uh, actors do come out to sign your playwright. I remember like we ran to go to the stage door to see if we can catch him. But unfortunately, none of the actors came out because again, it's a matinee showing. They're not always coming out in matinee showings, but I unfortunately was not able to get a signature. I wanted to just like tell him like, you were amazing. You did a really good job, you know, just to validate. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he has no idea who I am. I just wanted to make a video about this because again I wanted to talk about it because this is amazing I don't know if I would tell you guys to read the play if you haven't seen Adam Driver act in it Because I feel like Adam definitely did add a lot of why I love this play like let's be real It was Adam freaking driver. So if you watch this video, um Thank you. I really appreciate it. Honestly, you none of and nobody has to really watch this. I, it's just for myself again, just for me to remember this moment. Uh, <laughs> but um, if you did watch it, thank you so much, and I really do appreciate it. And um, thank you for just listening to me blab about things that have nothing to do with Disney because I know this is a Disney channel. Sometimes I like to do a, something different, you know. I hope wherever you are in this world, damsels, you are having a magical day. Mwah.